Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to believe we're almost a, a year upon that time. Rudy Gobert, Utah Jazz, March 11th. Uh, remember meeting that morning, we had uh, John Steinbrecher, the commissioner of the MAC, meeting with the MAC athletic directors, the pres presidents, and uh, ultimately the decision made to forestall it. And we, as an organization, uh, made the decision to go virtual uh, immediately. Uh, so to that end, we had been preparing for who knows who knew what was going to happen and uh, have been in a virtual environment largely over that time as we continue to work our way back. But it absolutely changed our, our world. We had, you know, our, our NBA season at that point was postponed along with what we had with our uh, Cleveland Monsters and along, along with concerts and other other activities. So it was uh, an incredible impact at that juncture and something that. You never think that you'll ever witness in your, I've been in this industry for a few decades and never had seen anything like it, nor hope to see anything like it again. Here. Yeah, we, we, have, we have over 200 ticketed events annually and 1,400 private events. Uh, we're one of the, by per capita, we're, we're the busiest concert venue in North America on a concert level and one of the most active buildings in the world uh, via Polestar ranking. So, we have a, an incredibly active building, so when you think of Cavaliers and Monsters, and, but concerts and family shows and NCAA events and the MAC tournament and so much more uh, that uh, people just took as a matter of rote that's always happening here, a, uh, the largest driver of economic activity of any venue in Cuyahoga County, and we take that responsibility seriously. We hear from restaurateurs, hoteliers every day, what's coming, what's happening down the line, because in a lot of respects, Cleveland, uh, a big part of what makes Cleveland special is we're an event town. So when you think of all three major professional sports venues, the Huntington Convention Center, Playhouse Square, uh, these are just, a, a, you know, just Jacob's Pavilion, all of this that happens here in downtown Cleveland, which was effectively shut off. An amazing leadership team, uh, just an incredible group of leaders. Uh, blessed to be part of a league such as the NBA with the uh, leadership of Commissioner Adam Silver. Fortunate to have uh, uh, the, the leadership ultimately with our chairman, Dan Gilbert, in terms of doing the right things to be able to make that happen. But frankly, we were in the moment and it was happening in real time. We have 500 team members and another 2,000 part-time team members. What's going on, what's happening, and how do we create a, an environment to be able to move forward with? And so we were in active, we had done a lot of preparation in advance on different scenarios, right? But uh, you can't fully go through all the scenarios of saying we're postponing everything. But ultimately, it was getting to that moment and then what's next? How do we prepare? How do we work our way out of this? And we certainly saw it with the league working our way through to the bubble. Uh, the monster season, you know, effectively ended. And then from a concert perspective and other live events, a lot of postponements occurring. And, uh, and, and obviously those are events that in many cases they can't really exist even as you look at a socially and distant environment at 25% capacity, whatever, they just can't make the economics work. So uh, there's not a television contract that, <laughs> that goes along with those that could help uh, continue at least to keep part of the ecosystem going. Uh, but we were in the moment and executing and because you didn't know what was coming next and then at that point it was trying to keep pushing forward to what was next. Well, first of all, uh, Speaking just on behalf of our industry, uh, we felt like we've achieved, we were given an unfair stigma. So for right or wrong or whatever the case may be, we've been the last to open. So when you think of other retail from restaurants and bars and museums and malls and movie theaters or whatever, a lot of the rest of the world was operating while we were still you know, silent as far as that was concerned. Uh, and we really welcome the opportunity to, to talk about this because in many respects, we feel ha we have the safest, one of the safest buildings in Ohio. So we just take a step back. This is an 800,000 square foot building. Uh, we have the closest environment to an outdoor setting in the indoors. We have state-of-the-art HVAC systems. So we, so we have unparalleled infrastructure, our scope and magnitude of our, our building, uh, our, our systems are at the highest levels. The transformation of Rock and Mortgage Fieldhouse couldn't have happened at a better time. So the investments here at $185 million of investment to create, we went from among, amongst the least amount of public square footage to amongst the most, and now have even a broader environment. We grabbed volume as far as air, airspace, so in our concourses and the like, 
much more open, open spaces, allows for a lot more in terms of social distancing, not as much crowding. So I, we've been hitting capacity all the way throughout, so the demand has been incredibly strong. We do a lot of research, and Cleveland is one of the markets which have the highest propensity for people who want to come back, want to be part of events and part of those activities. We're seeing that throughout our league, the NBA right now, where every week you have more and more venues coming online with fans or increased fans as well. And when people come here, we survey our fans post-event. The satisfaction levels we're getting are over 90%. We're serious about monitoring the protocols, so uh, social distancing, masking, uh, and uh, also just we have, we are staffed, while we may be staffed for, we have 25% people coming, we're staffed for a full event, full house. So when you look at, you come to our venue, our guest services staff, our security, our team members are everywhere so that we're in a position to keep people safe, to monitor, monitor the protocols and to be able to execute on, on those. Um, we have a, uh, a three structure out policy with masking. So in essence, uh, we give people warnings. Uh, there's uh, the NBA actually has a, uh, a, a card that they issue to you, basically giving you a, a final warning that they provide to all teams throughout the league. And then ultimately the third time, you know, again, if you're just blatantly disregarding that because at the end of the day it's it's obviously not about keeping those individuals safe but also all the other fans and and our our, our team members who are working the events as well it really only makes sense for them if if they're in a, a, a position to be able to have effectively a full capacity from a, a building perspective because just because of the economics when you think from their end it's all about that that uh, event and you know, partners such as Live Nation, AEG, others, uh, they're doing this worldwide and working in conjunction with them. And, you know, Michael Belkin, we have an amazing partner with Michael Belkin and Live Nation locally. Uh, and they're looking at prospectively uh, how to line up those tours, again, towards the lat latter part of the fourth quarter of this year to start. And then 2022 is shaping up to be an epic year from a concert year. Uh, it could be one of the greatest concert years we've ever had. What we've heard over and over again, the appetite for live entertainment and music is unbelievable. That's one of the things people, in, in addition to live, coming back to watch live sports, just having missed music as part of their lives, and everybody has their favorite artist. You know, we have The weekend already yeah. still on, 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 the, on the books coming, and uh, the excitement level to be able to come back and see their favorite artist uh, and make that reconnection again uh, we, we saw how robust the industry was prior to the pandemic, but it's that it's, what it's just as showing is that absence has made the heart grow fonder. To be able to be the host for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction uh, ceremony uh, on a multi-year agreement here for uh, October 30th of this year, and uh, we we feel uh, this we have a building in Rock and Mortgage Field House that is suitable for what is one of the gem events worldwide. Well, first of all, we could not be more blessed or fortunate. We have amazing partners in Adam Silver and the NBA, Mark Tatum, the deputy commissioner. They had pledged to Cleveland, to Cuyahoga County, that if the transformation, to be able to, to put the facility on a standard that competes with the rest of the league and competes nationally, uh, that they would bring the all-star game here. They were true to their word. And in a lot of respects, we jumped the line over a lot of other, other communities. Uh, it also worked out fortuitously. It happens to be the 75th anniversary of the league. We had the 50th here in Cleveland. You can't, you can't go to bed. We had the 50 top players of all time here in Cleveland back in 1997. Who knows what's in store for 20, 2022. Uh, but to the point that this could be the first major event of that level, even worldwide, you know, to really be, have that type of access in, in, for our, our fans, whether it be in the venue or in the market, uh, is, uh, is something that we're incredibly excited about. The thing about it is our league is so about how does this epitomize Cleveland? How do we provide access for fans and the amount of events and activation and activity that will take place outside the venue uh, and in various other, other venues throughout uh, the city is going to be extensive. And on top of that, we're going to look to have this to be a year-long celebration. So we're effectively a year away. You know, in terms of All-Star on, on uh, March 7th in Atlanta and then headlong into February of next year. And uh, we're looking forward to this, uh, you know, later this summer, starting to activate with different events, engagements, activities, and then also opportunities, the platforms for engagement that our league takes 
seriously relative to diversity and inclusion and youth development and other elements that are other tenants of our league that are incredibly important. Our, our league in a whole has played a leadership role with that. We have an amazing group of leaders too with our general manager Kobe Altman and head coach J.B. Bickerstaff working with the three team alliance as well but with the Indians and Browns and those all those uh, efforts are going to converge together on a platform that will be evidence to 215 countries and territories over a billion people with their all all of their eyes upon Cleveland